So what are we doing up on the hill? Uh, we are excavating a Bronze Age burial mound. So it's from about 4,000-ish years ago. We started excavating it in 2017. We've had a bit of a delay because of the pandemic. But we're back at it again. Um, what is essentially, you know, why you're up here? What is it that drew you to the site originally? So we were looking for a mound that hadn't been excavated before. Lots of, there are about 180 mounds on the Isle of Man that are like this, and lots of them were excavated by antiquarians in the 1800s. We wanted one that hadn't been excavated, that we could use modern techniques and apply modern science to to help us understand it better. And what does this tell you about, you know, early man, essentially? So this tells us about life and death in the Bronze Age and a little bit in the late Neolithic as well, so the period that comes before the Bronze Age. And um, we've been learning about the kind of diverse ways that people lived. So we've got evidence of what their daily life was like. We've got ceramics and flint tools, but then also what they did with their dead. And the answer is that it's quite varied. We've had seven burials so far out of the site. Some of them have been in kists, so stone boxes. Some of them have been underneath ceramic vessels. Some of them have been in little pits and some of them have been in upright ceramic vessels. Sometimes they're cremated. And in the case of the kind of what we think is probably the first burial at the site, the one associated with the really exquisite jet necklace, that one is, was in the bottom of a big pit and that was an inhumation rather than a cremation burial. So with that, does that tell you also about into the social structure around what people were living like at the time? That's a really interesting question and what it can tell us about that. So all kinds of different people were buried in this site. The one set of bones that we've had the proper scientific analysis of are from a child who was under two years old and suffered from a deficiency disease. And they've been buried alongside the other people that are in here. And that might tell us about kind of how children were treated, what people thought about children dying in relation to kind of other adults. And we can also begin to think about all the different forms of burial that are going on and whether that's telling us uh, about how society was organized or whether it's quite a kind of an equal society or not so just behind us you got this is where you've been digging on and off for 2019 you were first in here uh, yeah, 2017. 2017. So this is, you keep coming back to this, in particular this. So this bit actually here, we opened in 2019. Uh, we have had other trenches open that aren't open now. Um, we didn't quite get this finished because it has some quite complicated archaeology. So at the minute we've got a bronze age pot that's exposed that we're carefully excavating through and maybe it contains a burial underneath it. We'll have to wait and see. And we've got other parts of the cairn that need more careful and slow excavation, so we just didn't get a chance to get it done. How do you handle that when you find, you know, evidence that there is a body in there? Um, so the answer is slowly. So we want to extract as much information as we possibly can. So often we dig half of a feature containing human remains so we can try and get the best chance of understanding it so we can see what it looks like before we just take a slice through it. And we think about recording everything so we'll keep all the soil that comes out of a burial, we'll keep all of the finds and everything that's from within it so that we can try and get as much information as possible. And we've got this site over to what's well, my left and your right, where you started the trench. We just started this year. Yep. And so, how far will that go down as deep as you have here, or? Yep, probably so. Um, so it could be up to a meter or so deep by the time we get there. And um, so we've got some work to do. And that is quite a long process. Yep, yeah, we've got four weeks, and things move. I think most people think we go quite slowly, <laughs> um, but. Uh, when you're obviously we're digging with trowels and brushes rather than kind of hammering through things with the digger. So you just found the pottery vessel. Yep. And um, so what, what can that tell us about who's here and potentially you know how long will it take you to uncover the rest of it actually? Uh, so we're excavating down to pull the pottery vessel out maybe uh, probably the rest of the day to do this job would be my guess. Um, potentially found two other vessels like this elsewhere on the site and underneath both of them were cr cremated human remains and the kind of information we can get from that from the osteological assessment can include things like what temperature it burnt at it can include in some cases age and sexing of the individual but it depends a little bit on the degree of preservation and what's what's there sometimes there's more than one individual placed under a vessel so that's something else that the osteologists can tell us so we can think about are people being buried together and why might that be or are they being buried separately as individuals and what that might tell us just based on what you've been able to find with uh, the way this, this is set out for burials is there evidence that people were living here at all or is it seems purely for burial so 
the site itself is a Bronze Age burial mound, but there's quite a degree of kind of debris around the place from general life, and that indicates that perhaps people were coming up here quite regularly to uh, maybe to visit the dead or to carry out other other things. Um, but underneath the Bronze Age bit of the mound, we also have some late Neolithic evidence, and that late Neolithic evidence includes uh, evidence that people were living here temporarily. We would think that's how we'd interpret it anyway. Why the Isle of Man? Why the Isle of Man? I'm from the Isle of Man mm -hmm. um, and I had done my PhD on the Isle of Man and I wanted to come and explore some of the things from that in more depth and uh, I worked with my co-director uh, Professor Chris Fowler from Newcastle University and he also has a really keen interest in Manx archaeology so that's why we're here. And just in terms of everything that comes out of the ground here, what that happens to? It goes to the Manx Museum so all of our finds from the previous seasons are with them and uh, they'll be studied some more by our team so that we can then write them all up and do a really fulsome report. And after you've been away with the pandemic, you'll be back this year, it's then to back again next year and year after? Or? We're actually hoping we might get finished this season, so four years for a burial mound um, is uh, a good amount of time and we'd be really pleased if we could get done. And after that, was there anywhere else on your hand that you want to go for? Wait and see. <laughs> okay. Thank you. No problem. Is that okay?